Hello everyone and welcome. I am Melissa. This video is number eight in the Understanding Gambling Addiction series. And as promised from the previous video, I want to talk a little bit about the source. Now, before I get started, let me just say that I understand that not everyone is prone to problem gambling or gambling addiction. If gambling is working for you, by all means, carry on. These videos are designed for those who may have a problem with gambling addiction or who may feel like they have a problem with gambling addiction or who may know someone who they think has the same problem. And if this is you, please do not hesitate to contact the National Council on Problem Gambling. That number is 1-800-522-4700. So let's go ahead and jump right in. But before we do, I do want to apologize for taking so long to upload this video. I had a myriad of things that have been going on in my life and I just couldn't take the time to stop and record the video. And I apologize for that, um, but we're together now and we're going to go ahead and get through this video. Um, I do wanna let you know that the video is gonna be relatively long, probably longer than any of my other videos before. Um, but I respect your time and I'm going to try to move um, as quickly through it as possible and try to still be as thorough as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and jump right into it. But I think that um, rather than deem this video the source, I think it's probably more befitting um, to view it as um, drivers and uh, triggers. So we're looking at what drives you to want to gamble and what triggers you to want to gamble. And for different people, that's going to be different things. Um, but we want to look at things that entice us to gamble and things that increase the urge to gamble. And I will say this, you guys, that's why it's so very important to um, manage your life. Because a lot of what we see on the list um, it includes things that are just a part of our um, everyday life. Some of these things are, and we can't just um, depend upon um, uh, gambling or any other uh, thing um, to relieve us from these issues, right? Um, there's got to be another way to manage life um, without using gambling as a crutch um, to get through and get beyond um, some of these things, especially the emotional um, things. But I think that we're able to do that. And um, again, your absolute source is going to be different from someone else's. Everyone's not going to have the same source. But I do implore you um, to please seek counseling if you have depression, if you have something of that sort. Seek counseling because... I think that, again, everything that we're dealing with stems from somewhere else. So before I jump into the list, and while we're on that note, I want to share with you, um, and I'm going to try and be as brief as possible, but I want to share with you something about myself that also supports um, why I um, really, really urge you to seek the source and heal from the source. So some years ago, um, I discovered that I was severely anemic, very, very, very low iron, very low iron, extremely low iron to the point where my doctor thought that I may need a blood transfusion. That's how low my blood levels and iron levels were. And so my doctor and I, um, we worked to get those levels back up, but I didn't know what was causing my low energy. I was feeling lethargic most of the time, very tired. My energy was extremely low and I didn't have a clue what was driving that. Um, I would be weak, um, I would be cold all of the time. And again, I just couldn't understand um, what that was. Now, during this time, guys, this is the strange part. Uh, during this time, I had developed 
um, an addiction to peppermint. And I want you to understand something. It wasn't the sugar factor that I was after. It was the actual peppermint. I had to have it. I could not be in the house without peppermint. And um, it had gotten to the point where um, the urges were so bad uh, for peppermint that the thought of peppermint made me salivate. Just thinking about it made my mouth water because I felt like I needed and wanted the peppermint so bad. Um, I would even um, keep with me organic peppermint oil and I would sniff that peppermint oil because I felt like it made me feel um, more relaxed, um, less stressed out. Um, I could sleep better. I just needed the mint. And I couldn't understand where on earth that came from. It was so bad until I remember one night, about two or three o'clock actually one morning, two or three o'clock in the morning, um, I remember um, that there was a peppermint behind my chest of drawers. When I opened the peppermint packet um, some days before that, um, one of the peppermint candies flew out of the bag and behind the chest of drawers and I didn't bother to deal with that at the time but when I couldn't sleep that night and this was later um, when I couldn't sleep I remember that that peppermint flew behind the chest of drawers and I got up two and three o'clock in the morning to move the chest of drawers to get that peppermint and after I got the peppermint and bit into it and felt that burst of mint just through my nasal cavity, I felt like then I could relax and then I could actually um, fall asleep. And I know that's a weird story, but I'm sharing it with you for a reason because um, when my doctor and I worked to get my iron levels back up, it took about a year and a half to two years to get that like successfully done. And guys, let me tell you, when my iron levels um, returned, I had absolutely no more desire for the peppermint. Zero desire for mint. Um, if you showed me a mint right now, I would look at the mint like I'm looking at this pen. It would mean nothing to me. And, you know, we determined that, that, that urge, that desire for that thing came from the low iron because anemia and low iron makes you crave um, certain non-food related things. And so um, I share that with you again because I want you to understand that when you are able to heal something um, for, on the rudimentary level, the real source of the problem, um, that is where the healing begins. And so I just want us to keep that in mind as we begin to take a look at the list. Now guys, if you see me kind of peeking around like this, I'm trying to look at the timer on my uh, camera um, because I have had some problems with it kind of shutting off. And so I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on that to make sure that it's not shutting off on me. And I wanna keep, a, keep um, a track on timing anyway so that this video doesn't go into the 30 and 40 minute zone. So, um, okay, everyone, let's go ahead and, and, and jump right into it. So let's look at the list. I've got about 15 things on the list. And let me just say, you guys, you're gonna see this listing again um, in another um, video. Um, it's gonna be more structured whenever I begin to go into the workshop and we look at tactics to overcome gambling addiction. Okay, and um, I compiled this list simply through research, studying others, um, my own experience, and watching um, gambling addiction behavior as well. Now, let me just go ahead and let you know in advance, we're going to look at depression and the umbrella, and then we're going to look at exposure and that umbrella, and then we are going to look at illness and uh, emotions. Okay, so we're going to look at four key elements and those sub drivers under um, each one. Okay, 
um, let's first consider depression, okay? Because what we know about depression is that um, with it comes uh, extremely low energy, um, hopelessness, usually no vision for life or no hope for the future, at least nothing positive anyway. Um, and depression tends to take away your drive from being able to do anything, anything at all, especially anything productive. And the way that that becomes a driver for a gambling addiction or it, it drives the urge to gamble is that when you go into the gaming establishment, um, there's not a lot of energy that's needed. You go in there, you sit down at your favorite machine and you hit the button. Um, I've seen people in there who even look like they were almost falling asleep, but they would not get away and get up and get away from that, that um, game. And so we know that because you can go in that environment and just sit and not do much, but sit and just press the button, um, that can aid in um, uh, supporting the urge or being the driver for people who are depressed um, to be drawn to um, the casino or any other gaming establishment. And under that list um, is loneliness. And I put that under the depression umbrella because it can stem from that. Um, when an individual is dealing with loneliness, they could be using the casino um, for the social aspect. You know, it's a social uh, establishment. And um, even though an individual, an individual may feel lonely, there's so many people around them. There's so much activity, so much excitement and um, everything going on until they tend to feel less lonely when they're in that environment. And people are relatively easy to talk to, especially if they're winning. And sometimes they can be quite talkative even if they're losing. Um, so for people who are dealing with loneliness, um, they can use the casino or the gaming establishment. Um, and that can kind of be considered as a driver or a trigger that forces them to continue to go back. Guys, I'm going to try to move a little quicker um, so that we can at least, again, be uh, mindful and respectful of, of timing here because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But next in line is social anxiety. And for people who deal with social anxiety, they have problems building relationships with other people. Um, sometimes they have these certain feelings and emotions about being around other people, especially when they have to interact with them one-on-one. -on -one. And so they too tend to use the gaming establishment um, for the social aspect because they can sit in front of that machine and go one-on-one. -on -one. They don't have to ever say anything to anyone if they don't want to, if they don't feel comfortable, but they can simply sit in front of that machine and go one-on-one -on -one and have that action there. And so people with social anxiety tend to lean on that or lean into it um, as a way to relieve some of what they're going through if they are in fact using it as a system for companionship. Next in line is disappointment. Now, this one is a little funny because the thing about disappointment is that we all deal with it. But sometimes disappointment can... Uh, Sometimes it can, um, it can be so, so much of a factor in our lives, especially when we, we are dealing with the fact that sometimes life didn't turn out the way we thought that it would or the way that we expected it to turn out. And that can be highly disappointing. And sometimes we can be uh, working on trying to get things going in our lives and those things aren't working well either they can very much be driving forces and triggers to cause you to go and gamble as well. Um, because uh, that establishment, the gaming establishment or the casino, um, it serves as a way to mask those setbacks that we may be dealing with in life. And in a sense, it, it causes you to drown your misery in the gambling. And so again, it's kind of using the gambling as a crutch um, something that you can go to and 
just get into that zone. And when you get into that zone and your mind thinks of nothing else but in that zone of the play, and you don't have to think about how to work out your life, how to resolve these problems. You are just in a zone that puts you into a state of oblivion and you don't have to deal with it. Next in line under the depression umbrella is stress. Um, stress is a big one because again, that's very common, I think in all of our lives and we tend to look for relaxation methods um, to deal with our stress. Again, drowning the misery um, in the gambling so that we don't have to deal with how to work out that problem, how to resolve it. Um, the stress of the job, you know, you can go straight to the gaming establishment from the job and it just as a, a, a manner of relaxation. I've heard people say many times, oh, I'm just relaxing, I'm just relaxing. And that is, of course, until they begin losing their money and then it's no longer relaxation, it's more stress. Okay, and finally, under the depression umbrella is uh, using it as a form of self-medicating. Um, and it's the comfort of sitting even when you're sick or if you're elderly. Um, I've seen all kinds of people, very sick people in casinos and uh, very elderly people. I've seen people in wheelchairs. I've seen people on crutches. I've seen people um, uh, who've had the um, oxygen tanks and the, you know, uh, the, the breathing machines and all of that. I mean, they are in all conditions, but they find themselves making their way into the gaming establishment. And again, it, it's the comfort of not having to do much once you're in there, but hit that button. As long as you have a working hand to hit that button, you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to be in there. So that's everything under the depression umbrella. Let's look at what's under the exposure umbrella. And we have exposure, genetics, video games, challenge and risk. Now, let's look at exposure first um, because it plays a major role as it gives you access and it makes it easier for those who may have a gambling problem to continue to go back to the establishment because it is in such a close proximity to where you may live. Um, if you are trying to overcome gambling addiction and you are in very close proximity, that could also be a problem as well. It's not a source, but it does aid in gambling addiction. Um, and for some people, it may very well be a source if they innocently go into the gaming establishment because it's very close by and then they continue to go over and over again and hence it turns into an addiction. It could be a source for some people. Um, there's a video on YouTube where, um, I can't remember if it's ABC News, but there is a, um, a, a news a channel that is interviewing a gentleman who was the mayor of Philadelphia at that time. And they were talking about the casinos coming into Philadelphia and the a role that it would play on uh, uh, possibly creating new gambling addicts. And, you know, the mayor was very defensive about um, why the casino was a good idea and it wouldn't create any new gamblers. And he was very defensive about that. But I do believe that exposure does play a part because it, again, makes it accessible um, to anyone who wants to do so. But guys, keep in mind that um, there are people who live in Vegas, the gambling capital of the country, and they don't gamble. So exposure isn't always... Um, um, at fault, but it can be a trigger or a driver. Let's move on to genetics, which is also under the exposure umbrella. And I put it there because if there is addictive behavior in your family background, I'm kind of sort of feeling like you've already been exposed. Um, if it runs in your family and you might have had a cousin or an aunt or, or an uncle who was an alcoholic, but you hate the smell of alcohol, but your drug of choice is gambling because that addictive behavior runs in your background. It runs in your genes. So if it is through genetics, there is kind of a pre-exposure um, to um, addiction of some sort. And that is why I put genetics under exposure.
Next in line is video games. And I put that there because video gamers are known to be able to sit in rooms, in dark rooms for long periods of time, just doing nothing but gaming their lives away. You know, that there's that one-on-one -on -one action with the computer and with that joystick in their hands and they're just going at it, just one-on-one -on -one with that computer, wanting to win, wanting to beat the opponent um, and wanting, um, again, that one-on-one -on -one activity, um, which moves us to the next thing, challenge. Um, there are people who crave the challenge and the more challenging that thing is, the more engaged they are with it. They need something bigger. They need something stronger than the previous challenge. They have to continue to climb that ladder of success by uh, seeking a larger and larger challenge. And of course, that leads us to the last item under the exposure umbrella, which is risk. Risk takers are known to, again, want to take higher and higher and higher risks. And in the gaming establishment, risk takers do what? They take higher bets, um, which leads to bigger financial chances. And so when they hit, they hit big, but when they lose, they lose big as well. And the more you are exposed to gambling, the riskier it becomes. How many of us have started out with just 25 cents, betting 25 cents, and then you won $1,000 off of that quarter. And after you won that $1,000 off of that 25 cents, the next two times you went in, you took it to 50 cents, and then a dollar, and then $5 a hand. And before you know it, the bigger financial risks have led you to having bigger financial losses. Risk takers. Um, are under the listing uh, are under the umbrella of exposure and guys the reason why I put challenge and risk and uh, risk takers under the exposure umbrella is because um, those individuals typically have already been exposed to something but they want more of the thing and so again it's that matter of seeking something something larger a larger challenge a bigger risk and so that's why those two items are under exposure let's move on to uh illness um and under illness i have two things listed only medication because medication can cause change in brain chemistry and it can cause addiction i think there's a video on youtube now where a young lady was suing because of the medication that she was prescribed had not only caused her to become addicted to the medication, but it also caused a change in her brain chemistry and she found herself addicted to other things, such as gambling. She had gotten caught up with that and um, she believes that it had something to do with the medication and that could very well be so. So I listed that under illness. Uh, also under illness, accidents, because we know that sometimes if there is a traumatic brain injury that has occurred after an accident or as a result, it does affect the neurological system and it can alter the brain and it can change things there, right? And if that happens, of course, um, if, if, if that thinking is not the same again, that could also um, aid in addiction or or cause someone to uh, be prone to um, seeking relief from the effects of the accident. So it's not just a matter of the neurological change that an accident could have caused, but it, it could also be that the individual just wants the escape from the pain of that, okay? Um, let's move on to our final one, and let's see, our, how are we doing on time? Uh, Gotta move a little quicker. That final one is emotions, okay? And I only have four emotions there, um, or four things under emotion. That's revenge, desperation, anger, and excitement. We all know about revenge. It's that desire to get back at the machine, that desire to win again. And sometimes it has nothing to do with getting the money back. You just wanna beat the machine because you're tired of the machine beating you. 
And so that revenge is there all the time to go back and, and, and win again and to beat it. And in some cases to get your money, which leads me to the next one, desperation or chasing your losses. In this case, you think you've convinced yourself it's about getting your losses back until you actually win them back and then you keep playing because you're addicted and you cannot stop. So you tell yourself it's wanting your money back. So you go into that desperation and that chase. That's an emotional thing. And that also is a driver or a trigger to send you back into the establishment. Okay, guys, anger is next. And it could be anger from losing your money or anger from some other issue. But that can very well drive you to the establishment or to the casino just to de-stress yourself, to release that angry energy. And then, of course, you get in there and you begin to lose and you become more angry, right? So you leave the gaming establishment just as angry as you were before you got there, okay? And um, so that's kind of the catch-22 of, of, of that. Um, and the final one, guys, is excitement, right? Sometimes we've had a great day, a great week. You're feeling good. You're feeling lucky. You might have purchased a lottery ticket and won a little something off of that. And you're saying, you know what? I'm having such a great time. Nothing can bring me down. So then you go to the gaming establishment thinking that you're going to win again. And you get there and the thought of nothing being able to bring you down quickly changes when you begin to lose your money. And so sometimes excitement um, can send you, uh, can be a trigger um, or a driving force to send an individual back to the gaming establishment to play. Um, I heard someone say once that regardless of whether they were up or down, whether they were mad or happy, um, there was always a reason to go back to the casino to play. And that's not good. It's not good because it locks you into continuously going back there, regardless of what kind of day you're having. But guys, this concludes the list and everything that I have on it. We had about 15 items there. And if I missed anything that's not under either of these umbrellas, please feel free to put it in the comment section. I would really appreciate that um, because it further helps me with my research and how I um, even understand the development um, of the addiction and everything that falls underneath uh, the umbrellas every possible thing that can fall underneath these umbrellas as a trigger, okay? Um, and uh, so this concludes our list. Guys, I hope this video has been helpful to someone and I implore you again to please find your source. We know that these are triggers and for some people these may be sources, but I, I urge you to look for your source and if it happens to be uh, something involving depression that would require counseling on a professional level, I suggest that you look into that and do so. Only, knew, only you know yourself and what you're going through and what you're dealing with. Um, and if you feel like it is that, please seek counseling. Because if you can heal it there on, that, on, on the rudimentary level, um, you can heal um, the result of that thing. Okay, I believe that so strongly and I believe in that firmly. Heal it on at the root, okay? And everything else that springs from the root will be healthy because everything comes from something bigger than itself. So if you're dealing with gambling addiction, there is usually a bigger issue than just the gambling addiction. There's something that turned that on. And we want to find out what it is, but only you can, uh, can uh, figure that out for yourself or maybe get a counselor to try to help you figure that out as well. Guys, I appreciate you all so much for tuning in to this channel and sticking with me even though I've um, taken such a long time between these videos. I promise you to have the next one up within the month before the month is out. And the next one is going to be called Fair Trade. Number nine is going to be called Fair Trade. And I want to talk about what you're actually trading um, when you are addicted to gambling. There's so much else in life that needs your attention. 
But the addiction of gambling is so big that it takes up so much of your life and it pulls you away from other things that desperately need you um, in your life, in the whole of your life. And so understanding gambling addiction video number nine is going to be called Fair Trade. And I will see you guys in that video. And again, I'm going to try to get that one up before the month is out, possibly sooner than that. Okay. Um, I appreciate you all again. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel. Good luck on your journey and your life. God bless you.